We've been in the world of The Division 2 now going on nearly four months, and there are still many in-game mechanics and features that a majority of the player base doesn't know anything about. It's Lt. Buzz Lightyear, and I'm back with another 10 features every agent should know about video for The Division 2. Now, I have been gradually farming and taking my time in this game, and in general, I consider myself a well-informed Division agent. For some of these, I will admit, I had no idea they existed. The user interface is not exactly easy to navigate and consists of menus, tabs, submenus, and so on. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Ten. Fast traveling around the map is something all seasoned agents are accustomed to, as simply running from landmark to landmark can waste valuable gaming time. However, once you reach level 30 and progress into the world tiers, certain sections of the map will become occupied as the Black Tusk faction attempts to retake Washington DC. With the Black Tusk occupying an area, you will not be able to fast travel to any section of the map colored in red, save one. A quality of life feature that was added in Title Update 3 now allows players to fast travel to friendly convoys, and if there is one traveling through the occupied zone, you can save yourself some time just by fast traveling to the convoy and then using that as a jump off point as you make your way to another task or mission within the occupied zone. Nine. Also included in the Title Update 3 patch was the introduction, or should I say reintroduction, of the neutral lighting setting for consoles. And I say reintroduction, as it was available for console players to experiment with in the original Division game, but was absent at launch for the Division 2. In order to activate neutral lighting on consoles, open up your main player screen in your UI. Go to your Settings tab, go to the Graphics tab, and scroll down until you see the Neutral Lighting tab. Toggle it on, and you will get a more realistic lighting effect throughout your gameplay. Now, for those of you who don't know what Neutral Lighting does, it removes this magical haze in your environment that makes even objects that are in pitch black areas visible. By removing this haze of light, the darker areas become darker, and the shadows and reflections become much clearer. I always have it activated on my PC and would highly recommend this setting to any agents looking to get a more realistic look to their game. Eight. I'm still amazed that to this day I still receive questions about the strange buzzing and disoriented heads up displays that agents experience periodically while roaming the open world. And for those of you that don't know what causes that, I have two words for you. The Hunters. The Hunters are highly advanced NPCs that have tech on par with our own, and if you ever do finish a task or mission in the open world and hear a buzzing sound while your HUD starts going fuzzy, look around, usually up on the rooftops, and you will see one of these apex predators stalking you. If you manage to kill a Hunter, some will reward you with a special collectible mask, as well as high-end loot, but be careful. They are highly agile, have intense amounts of firepower, advanced tech that includes skill jammers, and if given the opportunity, will melee you with their iconic weapon, the Hunter Hatchet. Seven. This next mechanic is for those of you trying to complete the Suits You Sir commendation for collecting the playing card drops from open world bosses. And for those of you that don't know, the open world bosses are set on a 30 minute timer that resets if you kill a boss or are killed yourself. The easiest and most consistent location to find named elite bosses is on the White House lawn, located directly due south from the White House. Spawning in every 30 minutes, a new named boss will appear with a small group of protectors at this location, and all you need to do is fast travel to the White House and make the short jog south to the site, Kill the boss, collect the playing card, wait another 30 minutes, rinse and repeat. The mechanics of this should spawn in a new boss that you do not have the playing card for and should not duplicate the cards until you have killed and accumulated all 52 playing cards in the deck. If you happen to arrive at this location and see that the named boss in fact is one that you already have in your deck, for example you are looking for a True Sons boss and there is an Outcast boss at the location, simply fast travel back to the White House and then run back to the spawn location and a new boss should have spawned in. There is also this second location showing now on your screens that will normally guarantee a named boss in case you don't find what you are looking for at the South White House lawn location. 
Simply fast travel to this stronghold and make a short run west into this building on the south side of the road and you will find the boss in the courtyard providing that you have let 30 minutes pass since your last open world boss kill. Six. FOV, or Field of View, settings are now available for all platforms and these are especially helpful on console. By increasing the field of view, you are opening up your view to something a bit more widescreen and allows you to see more of what is coming at you from the very edges of your peripheral vision. This was initially only available to PC players, but in a previous update was added for console players as well. To adjust your field of view, simply open up your main character screen, Activate the settings tab. From there, activate the top menu icon to open your gameplay settings. Next, scroll down to the bottom of your gameplay settings until you reach the additional field of vision tab and the additional field of vision while aiming tabs. And these are the two sliders you can use to manipulate your field of view. Some players prefer not to mess with these at all, but for me, I prefer to have these nearly maxed out to give me the widest angle view as possible. By maxing out your FOV settings, you are essentially moving the third person camera a little further back from your agent, so you will not only get a wider view of the world side to side, but you will also reveal more of your agent, and you can now see just a bit behind you in case you were about to be attacked from behind. Five. Most players do not know that all the random objects that we loot while roaming the open world, like teddy bears, kid shoes, and even crayons, can be sold for credits. Now, I want to caution you as to a few mechanics to how this works. First, these random objects do not count against your material stash or inventory, so in theory, you can loot as much junk as you want, and it will not cost you any inventory space. Second, some of these more valuable items, like the hex wrench, batteries, and screwdrivers, can be redeemed with scavenging civilians or for quests, so choose wisely if you want to sell your trinkets for credits. Ultimately, these somewhat useless items are not worth very much in credits, but if you were trying to min-max your build using the recalibration station and are really close to having the necessary amount of credits for recal, selling these items could put you over the top and finish up your build. But remember to be careful. There is no option to pick the exact trinkets you want to sell, and you will just be prompted to sell all, and this will include the more valuable trinkets I mentioned previously. Four. Agents are always looking for an advantage in a hectic firefight, and learning to dodge roll reload can be a game changer for the player who can master it. Remember that in the Division 2, when you reload while sprinting, your character will pull back from the sprint into a jog until the reload is completed, at which time you can reactivate the sprint. This mechanic of starting the reload animation and performing a quick combat roll shortly after the animation begins will effectively reload the weapon as you perform the roll and can lead to slightly faster movement speeds and attachments to cover. It will take some practice and timing to learn how long you need to wait between pressing reload and activating the dodge roll, but in a pinch, it can make the difference between winning or losing an engagement. Three. Most agents know that clearing checkpoints in the open world can lead to looting gear and those ever sought after blueprints, but checkpoints can also be extremely helpful for agents looking to complete discovery merit commendations. Let me explain. As you progress through the campaign, you accumulate shade tech and redeem it at the White House Quartermaster to unlock upgraded perks. One of those perks unlocks upgraded detection for 10 minutes of loot containers within a 20 meter radius. So, for an agent who is having issues completing a Discovery Merit Combination, or simply doesn't want to spend useless time wandering around a mission looking for loot containers, here is what you do. First, select a checkpoint and either clear it as is, or if you're like me, elevate it to a level 3 or 4 and not only clear it but receive a blueprint. Then, resupply the friendly checkpoint civilian leader to activate your 10 minutes elevated detection perk. Quickly fast travel to the mission you are attempting to complete the accommodation for and begin. The detection timer may run out during the mission, but 10 minutes is usually more than enough time to find enough loot containers to unlock the accommodation, as you will see the red pixels of the containers through walls and cover. 
Now, I have also experimented with this using this method with a squad mate, where when the detection perk runs out, I would fast travel out of the mission back to the checkpoint and resupply the leader again, or at a different checkpoint, therefore refreshing the timer, then fast travel back to my squad mate who is still waiting in the mission, and we continue on. Two. The Division 2 features trackable projects through your Agent Progression tab, but did you know that you can create your own projects to track and complete? Now, this is not fully customizable, but you can use this little known feature to help you track quests, like for instance when you were sourcing the necessary components to craft the exotic Nemesis sniper rifle. If you activate your current projects list by pressing the map key, then look at the top left hand corner of your screen, you will see the clipboard icon, and that is your projects tab. Click on it and you will see all your current projects, dailies, weeklies, exotic quests, etc, but no custom projects to track. Next, go to your crafting bench and if you select the item you are choosing to craft, it will offer you a tab at the bottom of your screen that reads Make Project and all you need to do is click on that tab. Now, if you return to your agent's project tab the same way you did before, your custom projects will display as the very first option. This feature can prove useful if you want to custom craft gear or weaponry and do not currently have the necessary components or resources to do so. Just like other projects, the progress meter for your project will show fully round once you have all items necessary to complete the project. One. Clans are an excellent way of pairing up with like-minded agents for mission clears, commendations, PvP, and even the Dark Hours raid. But for hardcore agents, it is also an excellent source of high-end gear if you know what to do and where to look. If you travel to the east wing of the White House and interact with a clan table, you can search for and join a clan that does not require an invite. For my purposes, I searched for and joined a level 30 clan, as a level 30 clan has some of the best gear available to members. Once I joined, I now had access to the clan vendor, and this is where the gear can be obtained. Each week, the clan vendor will have a different selection of gear available for purchase, and in the case of this week, I was able to purchase chess pieces with 13% all weapon damage, which, while not perfect, is really quite good. There are also ways to get even higher gear rolls which involve joining a level 16 clan and then either progressing to world tier 2 or joining a friend's world tier 2 game, but for very little effort I was able to purchase the vendor gear. Once you are done making your purchases, you can either stay in the clan you joined or simply quit the clan and wait for next week. As always, I look forward to reading your comments concerning my latest 10 features most agents don't know about in the Division 2 video. If you could take the time to either rate the video with a thumbs up or down, it would be greatly appreciated. While you are here, if you could take the time to pound that sub button and press on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel, it would be most welcome. You can also follow me over on Twitter for my latest thoughts and comments, as well as on Twitch with weekly streams. Until my next video, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.